Thanks guys, Sydney Chan, Cedric Derecho, back at it again, but this time we're not playing fortune teller, we're playing historian with an NFL Week 7 recap. We'll start off with some two great games of the week and then move into some civil discussion about what the heck NF and New York football is doing this week. But let's start over on the West Coast where the Kansas City Chiefs headed over to the San Francisco 49ers and beat them 28-18. Now, the Chiefs have really gotten a sense of the San Francisco 49ers number and their play over these last couple years, honestly, beating them in Super Bowl 54 and beating them in Super Bowl 58 as well. And now the Chiefs are the only unbeaten team in the league. Cedric, what were your thoughts after watching that game? That both quarterbacks really struggled, but the Chiefs always find a way. Purdy and Mahomes combined for five picks on the day. And, you know, Mahomes has eight interceptions. It's un -Mahomey like if you want to put it that way. No, honestly. And yet the Chiefs are still 6-0. They're the only undefeated team in the league. Absolutely. I commented on that as well because Mahomes really struggled to find his targets, but so did Brock Purdy, who also two of his interceptions were in the red zone. And a lot of the time, the Chiefs' defense and the running game were really able to keep that momentum going. But quickly, I also want to note that the Chiefs and the 49ers don't actually meet every regular season. So the next time the Chiefs will have a chance to even show some redemption, maybe in the postseason or maybe in the next couple of years. But now let's move on to what I think was one of the most beautiful games of this week, the Detroit Lions at the Minnesota Vikings. And the Lions just scraped by with that win, 31-29. And this was really, really crucial for them. But for the Vikings, this was a heartbreaking loss at home with only 19 seconds left off of a Lions field goal. Cedric, what were your thoughts? Well, you know, no Hutchinson, no problem for the Detroit Lions. Amonrod did his thing. Jared Goff had another spectacular game. And the Lions are showing why they are atop the, you know, they're the cream of the crop in the yeah. NFC. They are among the class of it. And they are showing exactly why. Look at the NFC North this season. All four teams would be in the playoffs Honestly, if the crazy. season ended today. It's wild. You know, a lot of fun football to watch in that division. No, absolutely. The NFC North has been doing crazy things this season. Let's take a second to appreciate the significance of this stat. Entering week eight, the combined record of those four teams is 19 and six. 19 wins and only six losses. And the lowest team on that totem pole are the Chicago Bears with a four and two record. But that's honestly a top record for a lot of the other divisions in the league. But now let's bring it back here because Cedric, I didn't just wear this blue top for no reason, besides the fact that I love the color royal blue. But this is for the Buffalo Bills, because personally, not personally, objectively, they are the only team that are keeping New York State football's name out of the gutter. What were the Jets doing? More importantly, what were the Giants doing? Let's break it down. Start with the Jets. Yeah, uh, Devontae Adams was not the immediate fix that the Jets hoped he would be. Firing Robert Sala, the team is still in a lot of turmoil, as we discussed yeah. last week. There's still a lot of work to be done with that team. Whether or not they can salvage this season, that remains to be seen. No, honestly, and the Jets have one of the worst rushing games in the NFL, but I really want to highlight something on the Steelers for a second. Russell Wilson, as his first ever start as their quarterback, and he destroyed the Jets with over 260 passing yards. I really think he did great in this game, and I hope to see him play a little bit more later on in the season. And now the Giants, who got absolutely demolished at home by the Philadelphia Eagles 28-3. What were you thinking from that? Well, my Eagles finally had a dominant performance, probably for the first time since the 2022 season. They're known for those close nail-biting victories these last couple years, so it was good to see the Eagles play complimentary football, both sides of the ball. Offense was clicking, defense was clicking. It was a good day for Birds fans. And I mean, honestly, let's highlight another player, running back Saquon Barkley, who showed up big time in an Eagles jersey for his first time visiting New York since leaving the Giants. He rushed for nearly 180 yards and scored a touchdown. And he had more total offensive yards as an individual player than the Giants as an entire team. An absolute embarrassment for the Giants. But we're not gonna leave you with a bitter taste in your mouth because like people like a sweet treat at the end of a day, I really, really like seeing the Bills dominate over the Titans. Yeah, you know, Josh Allen hasn't thrown an interception this year. What a turnaround compared to last year. He's going to be in the MVP race along with Lamar Jackson, who threw five touchdowns last yeah. night. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun football to watch in the AFC. You've got the Chiefs, of course, who's undefeated. And then now the Bills are right in the conversation yeah. along with the Ravens. 
just like it's been for the last couple seasons, right? It's going to be great. And whether the people in the Big Apple want to consider Buffalo a part of New York, the Bills are single-handedly keeping the football dreams alive in this state. Well, that's all we've got for you this time from Sydney Chan and Cedric Derechel. We'll head it over to the NFL next week preview with Leo, Carlton, and Andrew.